Yo Aguan, hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to mix your melodies in FL Studio. And I'm going to be sharing five melody mixing secrets that you need to know to have your melody sounding professional and way better than what you've got going on right about now. So if you want your melodies to sound great, if you want them to sound clean, you want them to sound professional, you want your whole beat to sound beautiful, stay tuned to the end of this video. This is gonna help you out a lot. Now, if you don't know who I am, I'm Jay Carter Ray from jaycarterray.com, teaching you how to be better at music, online business, and online marketing. This is the number one spot for musicians and creatives that don't wanna be starving eyes. So if that sounds like you, click on that subscribe button, check out the rest of the content on the channel because you will love it here, guaranteed, okay? let's before we get straight into it okay i've got a question for you and that question of the day is what is your favorite mixing plugin let me know in the comment section down below now let's get straight into it shall we and here we've already got one of my favorite mixing plugins halftime but we're not even going to talk about halftime in this particular video actually screw it Let's talk about halftime in this particular video. It's not one of my five mixing secrets, but it should have been, okay? Halftime is a great way to turn a chorus melody into a verse melody. And let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. Here is a chorus melody, okay? Let me play this back for you. This is called Ray Cook. A great melody if I do say so myself, but this great melody is also great as a verse melody. Let's hear that back over here, okay? With all it's got put on it, instead of, you know, what it was before, is half time and it's been pitched up, basically. So let's play this back. Now, something that can make your beat super, super boring is if you have the same melody from chorus to verse to chorus, it just makes your beat sound super, super repetitive. So putting half time on it and getting like a different version of your melody that's just a little bit slower and basically fits that verse vibe makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that's a secret that's not part of my five secrets, but I just had to tell you that because it was there and you know it's something that i know something that you should know as well so 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 first of all i'm going to be using my r&b trap beat mixing template for all of this and honestly you should be using it too there's a link down below to grab this or so go to jcarterray.com forward slash r&b trap fl to go and get that but this is what i use and it makes my beats half mixed before i even get to the mixing stage so if you want your beats to sound more professional then grab this asap okay so I'm gonna be going through some basics of mixing your melodies right about now. But with my template, all of these basics are taken care of before we even get to that stage. So first of all is EQing, yeah? And first secret is to EQ at the low end. Now I generally have my EQ to at least 115. And the reason why you want to take out the low end, this is a low, cut maybe or low let me see what the right word is by getting neutron i believe it is if we get neutron eq here that's going to tell me the right name my bad low high pass <laughs> i'm not 100 sure on the right name but Neutron is also a great eq plugin there is another eq plugin that i'm planning to check out that is gonna help basically teach you a lot of eq but that'll be here for a future video so let's quickly get this low shelf it can be a low shelf or it's it's basically a high pass flat high pass okay so i generally do a flat high pass to 115 yeah and the reason why i like neutron is because it's just so easy to get the the different things that you want to get like if i want the high pass or whatever it's so easy to get that set up and get that running but for the purposes of this video we're not going to go for it using neutron because uh with my template i just do a uh, normal parametric eq in fl studio because some people don't have neutron so let's go through okay so we've got a low or high pass to 115 i always get that confused high pass to 115 and a low pass to 5703 
okay so we've got rid of the low end that is secret number one the reason why we got want to get rid of the low end is because we want to create space for that 808 now if we don't get rid of the low end in our melodies then the 808 is not going to hit as hard as we want it to hit and when you're making a beat with melodies you're going to have an 808 or a kick drum or some sort of bass element in there as well and you want to create space for that bass element so doing this cut is what creates space for that element now i've also got another eq over here that cuts to this is cut into around 50 but we basically do the same kind of cut again but less egregious as the first cut depending on what we're doing now the second secret is to cut the high end now too much high end makes things just sound amateurish it just doesn't sound right okay so getting rid of that high end and focusing on the mid end gets you this nice sound that i like to go for but i just love everything to be super mid heavy so i get rid of some of that high end but we still got you know we still got a fair amount of high end like we've got two nine three six and all that like we're only cut into like five seven oh three and then uh, win our second eq we're cut into four nine six one and then these are just specific on the melody that you're creating sometimes you'll have certain notes that are just they just sound wrong they're like ringing in your ear they just sound uh that they're, they're annoying to your ear and in those situations you'll cut those out with you know some eq but i'll get deeper into eq and in a future video these are just you know some quick secrets to get your beat sounding way better and get your melody sounding way better so that's the eq in eq at the lows eq at the highs that should be the first step of your melody make sure you're doing that okay next step is to bounce your melody and change the pitch this isn't the original pitch of the melody no 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 i hardly ever bounce a melody and have it the same pitch this is pitched all the way down a whole octave okay so this is what the original melody sounds like let's play this back this is called great and this is Ample Guitar M Light. Now, Ample Guitar, Guitar M, the full version actually sounds way better, but this did the job. And generally, if you've got an instrument that sounds okay, you can make it sound even better by going to the MIDI. So let's see the MIDI over here. Now, when I created this MIDI, it was down a whole octave. So basically what I did was had it down a whole octave, I created it down here, and then I pitched it up a whole octave using control and up on my directional keyboard thing next to the number pad. And what this does is it created a high version of this like this. And some people, maybe you'd make a song in that octave. Personally, I wouldn't. I, I could use that octave for certain parts of the song, but generally, I don't you know i like my stuff to be a whole lot more mid so what i do then is i just pitch it down so pitch it down a whole octave so this is 1200 cents if you look in the top right the top left hand corner and then we play it back this is called great and it sounds like someone recorded it 30 years ago and i've just dug it out of a crate or something yeah it sounds beautiful and vintage yeah another thing that's making it sound beautiful and vintage is something that i'm going to talk about in the next secret but this is the first step bouncing your melodies to audio is the difference between sounding like an amateur producer and making your beats sound beautiful okay so definitely bounce your melodies down to audio and not just because you can pitch it down but because you have a wide range of options once you turn this into audio you can stretch it out to get a whole completely new melody you can pitch it to a different key for example let's it's in g minor but let's pitch it down i think every 200 cents is another um key i, I don't 100 percent remember because i haven't pitched this stuff down in ages so this this would be G minor, this would be E minor then. So let's listen to this. This is called Ray 
sounds different, doesn't it? Sounds interesting, actually. But if I was going to pitch it down to E minor or something like that, I'll pitch it down such a small amount, then I wouldn't pitch it up in the first place. So that's just something to learn there. But this gives you so many different options. And just pitching it to a different key or pitching it down a whole octave basically just makes your melody sound a whole lot more vintage sound a whole lot like it's got a lot more wear and tear and just makes it sound more interesting sounds like it's got more flavor like you know when you're if you just ate a whole pot of pasta with no cheese and uh, no anything on it just plain pasta it will taste terrible it tastes super bland yeah you don't want to eat pasta with nothing you want that sauce you want that sauce and honestly me personally like i can't just eat a tomato sauce a tomato sauce is okay that's that's a mid dinner yeah i need some spice in that yeah i need some flavor so you gotta add some flavor to your beats as well don't have it all bland and terrible okay the next step to add even more flavor is to grab some rc20 okay now this is my mixer which is i don't know why it was being into a pulp and got squashed like that like you know when mario jumps on those those people's heads in, in mario or uh, mario world or whatever um so here we've got rc20 and pretty much for all my men <laughs> let's get that a little bit bigger uh, for all my melodies i'm adding rc20 like I, I don't remember the last time i added a melody and didn't add rc20 since i got rc20 it's definitely worth it i definitely highly suggest you grab rc20 go to jcotarray.com forward slash rc20 i'll leave a link down below as well because it's just it's an essential part of your toolkit to get your beat just sounding a little bit more flavorful okay just adding a little bit more spice okay and you want to add spice to your beats don't you you're damn right you do if you don't add spice to your beats then it's going to be bland and you don't want a bland beat so here are the settings for this particular beat this particular melody generally i'll use vinyl or i'll use vhs for different types of melodies but you can play around with these settings and as long as you don't go too overboard everything's going to sound pretty good yeah so just play around and, and do what needs to be done okay so that's that secret next and last secret is don't have more than four melodies playing at once and something a little bit deeper into this is you need to make sure there's space for each of the melodies that is playing at once so for example yeah this has a lot to do with eqing but for my main melody i've got it just taken up the whole breadth of the middle of the track okay the whole breadth of the mid the mid frequencies i've got my main melody then my chord up or my up has some of that but it's got less yeah it's not the whole part it's a little bit less but we've got a low cut to like 212 we've got a high cut to 2578 yeah then if i've got a chord pad that's gonna be a little bit higher i think i'll put my chord pad to chorus chords we've got a cut to where is this i can't even see the number this is like around six five seven around there around seven hundred and something i can't see that exact number and we've got more of the high end here so we're letting more of the high end through for these chords and then we've got vocal chops as well now vocal chops generally don't take up too much space when they're playing like i'm not gonna have seven vocal chops going like that are like elongated throughout the song i'm gonna have them very very low and i'm gonna have them very very sparse and i'm gonna drown it in reverb so it's really really in the background and as you can see we've got a high cut to 248 as well and basically you don't want that to be overwhelming now the reason you only want four melodies is because any more than that and you're gonna have troubles with mixing it like it's just gonna happen you're gonna have troubles with mixing it it's gonna start to sound muddy and your your melodies aren't gonna sound as great as they could be also another tip that i do is i have my main melodies pan to the left i have my high melody so stuff in the high end of my track generally panned to the right and i'll have my pad straight in the middle okay so that pad is a supporting element for the chorus that basically lets you know hey we're in the chorus right about now 
and yeah let's play these melodies back so you can kind of see what's going on here and we'll play it without the drums and then we'll play it with the drums so you can hear what's going on okay so let's play this back You hear that? You can hear everything. You can hear that up. You can hear the main melody. You can hear the pad. You can hear the vocals. You can hear everything that's going on. And that's what you want with your melodies. You want to be able to hear everything. You don't want anything to be drowned in anything else out too much unless you want it to be drowned out. Like I want the vocals to be drowned out. I want the pad to be drowned out. I don't want those to be too in your face. But the chord up also very very low mixed very low and the main melody is the highest thing and i'll show you you know the levels of where everything is right now as i play it back with the drums so let's play this back So as you can see the core the chorus pad is super super low i just want it to enhance everything else that's going on honestly i could turn the vocal chop down a little bit more let's actually head that back and turn that down a little bit more And the chord up only really gets high at certain points. Honestly, if I added some compression to that, maybe with um, some neutron compression, then I could have leveled that out a little bit, but I like what's going on there. So I've left that. But generally you want your main, your main melody to be high, your next accompanying melody, counter melody to be lower than that. And then everything else, you kind of got to figure that out and I just have that lower as well. And I just have that, those accompanying melodies just supporting everything else. So the lower you go, the more it's supporting something else. So the, the alternative melody or the counter melody is supporting the main melody. The chorus pad is supporting that alternative or counter melody. Then the vocal chops kind of supporting everything to be honest. So that should maybe the pad should be at the bottom, but basically mix lower in it <laughs> don't have everything super super high and don't have more than four minutes if i had one more melody on here it'll be too much you start to go mad you don't want everything playing at once if you create more than four melodies just space it out over your beat maybe have one of those melodies in the verse maybe have three of the melodies in the chorus instead of all four don't do too much generally i'll have three melodies playing at the same time but sometimes i'll get in my bag and i'll be like okay let's let's have four playing at the same time okay so generally three sometimes four no more than that if you follow this rule your melodies will just sound better automatically yeah if you've got six melodies playing you're doing too much too many at the same time okay if you want your beats half mixed before you even get to the mixing stage remember you can grab my rmb trap beat mixing template in the description down below or go to jcartray.com forward slash rmb trap fl this will half mix your beats before you even get to it and have your beats sounding way more professional and just way better in general this will also help give you a starting point to learn how to mix your beats how to mix your melodies and all that sort of stuff because you can just look at all the settings and reverse engineer it this is the same template that i use for every single beat that are great so definitely grab that asap links are where they are i've already told you about that now if you got any other questions any other tutorials you want me to make let me know in the comment section down below and i'll see you in the next video where you'll learn more about music online business and online marketing peace out see you there